Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for Friday, September 16th, 2016. As if it was any doubt with my uh, buddy in the background wearing the Hawaiian shirt, crazy Hawaiian shirt there on the arcade. Game and Friday. Definitely a sign, exactly, that it is Game and Friday. So let's get into it, guys. Bit of preamble. First thing I wanted to mention is I haven't shown any Gear VR games. And the simple reason for that is, yeah, you know, there's games that definitely work with the touchpad, but a lot of the really great games that I've wanted to play require a gamepad controller. And that's what arrived for me today. So this was actually something I had shipped to work. It's the Select Series Stratus XL, which based on my research is supposed to be a really good Bluetooth controller to pair up with the Gear VR. So if I've lost my mind and it isn't, let me know in the comments below, but everything I've seen leads me to believe it's gonna be perfect for that. So end result is going to be working Gear VR games into my rotation for when I feature VR games. The other thing I wanted to talk about is just clarify uh, yesterday's build your own VR PC video. There were some questions uh, in the comments section. One of them was why I didn't mention the AMD 480. And I don't think the intent of the question was me um, biasing towards Nvidia. I get that because I showed an R9 290, which is an AMD card. It was more why I didn't mention it. And that's a good point. You know, it's one I should have mentioned. It would be if you had it or if you were going out to build your own entry level. Yeah, I would get the 480 over the R9 290. No doubt. It's the card I have, though. It's what I have to use without having to buy another card because I had that in Crossfire in my old system. So when I went to... Uh, the 1080 Founders Edition in this, one of the R9s went into that back machine, the other with my daughter. You get the drift, the, the kind of hand-me-down scheme, right? So it was for no other reason than I didn't have to buy a video card. I used what I had existing, basically recycled it. All right, into the news, guys. This uh, news piece comes from one of the viewers, uh, Kim Astor or Astor. Thank you. This was really, really cool. It's a locomotion peripheral, and it is super versatile. It's from a company called Future Town, and they call it Total Motion. There's going to be a video that I'm going to link below. Check it out, and let me know your honest opinion on the horse. <laughs> the urge to laugh still hits me because well you got to see it but check out the horse and tell me honestly if you could take yourself seriously riding a mighty steed in mountain blade vr when that eventually comes out or you know skyrim or something to me it's gonna it would take me a while it would take me a couple of weeks to build up to that confidence point where i could be seen uh doing that and this is coming from a nerd who wears an HMD on his head. So I would get there, eh, it would probably take me a couple of weeks. But the other stuff, so there was a surfboard shown, there was a motorbike, uh, and there was a, a cycle racing game, which just looked awesome. And I'm huge on getting the right peripheral for the right job, right? Whether it's a wheel for racing games, which is why I've held out on stuff like Project Cars, um, I want to experience that with a wheel, just like I wanted to experience Elite Dangerous with a HOTAS, right? Flight and uh, throttle stick. So, very cool. Uh, check that out. Let me know what your thoughts are on the horse riding. All I'm going to say is check out the motion you have to do to ride that horse. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to back off now. Next up, we have uh, a hollow lens update. Now, I showed a previous video dealing with the Microsoft HoloLens with uh, a guy doing some real kind of impromptu gardening. And he said himself, he's not a green thumb. He was looking at a hedge and he said, ideally this hedge 
should be a sphere. So using the HoloLens in just an awesome example of augmented reality trimmed his bush. And the end result was awesome. It definitely, definitely looked like the real thing. Like he'd literally had a gardener come out and trim his bush. So this application that I've seen on this video that I'm going to link you guys, I think it even one-ups that. And it's very oddly specific. So there is a uh, German elevator company called ThyssenKrupp. And these guys have a bunch of technicians that go out and among installation services, they offer repair services for elevators. So they're working with Microsoft to e equip each of their 24,000 service technicians with Microsoft HoloLens. What they're able to do is it's equal parts uh, time and attendance plus CRM plus tutorial. Like it shows them the job, the type of elevator, first of all, then the issue, and then notes on the type of repair for that. So what an amazing application. So you can see the genius of, and I rarely say that about Microsoft these days, but developing this. They're quietly in the background while everybody else is focusing on games and gaming. These guys, kind of much like the technology I talked about the other day with the alternative to polygons, they're finding application for their product in the business world with brick and mortar companies. And that is an awesome foundation to have. So eventually, yeah, they're going to get to, uh, to games, I'm sure, with the HoloLens. But right now, as, an, as a versatile business peripheral, damn, this thing is good. Looks amazing. Next up, uh, an article from Upload VR, and this comes uh, this comes from that article that I linked yesterday. I believe it was yesterday, showing um, Palmer in a horror game where he's screeching like a banshee, and it was just priceless. And hopefully scrub the audio of me doing something similar in VR horror games for some of you guys. But uh, anyways, there's apparently a best of of him at the Tokyo show. So now I know it was at the Tokyo 2016 show. But what I admire about this and what I like about this, and it's not that I've ever disliked him or really liked him. I was just pretty kind of ambivalent about him in general is how freely he's allowing himself to be seen literally wearing the competition. So if you notice, in most of these clips, he's using the HTC Vive. And you've heard a lot of things said about their initial take on room space, right? Room scale VR. Yet their actions behind the scenes were speaking differently. Well, I think it's pretty obvious especially with Lucky doing all these room scale things in this best of Lucky at the 2016 and enjoying it. So what better advertising for your own product? Like I'm sure somebody's going to take them aside and say, you know what? You might not want to be seen in public with the competitor too much. My take on that would be the opposite. I don't think that's going to hurt anything. I think it's going to live up to that original open source mentality that he had prior to them, you know, like post Kickstarter him, pre Kickstarter him. So very cool, very funny. Some really good clips on there featuring him at the Tokyo show doing a lot of things in VR. Now this next article appeals to the programmer in me. Uh, I've been a frustrated game programmer for about as long as I can remember, starting with basic and assembly language on the Commodore 64. All kinds of languages, Pascal, C, C++, assembly language. I would create demos and that was what I wanted to do. So <laughs> this really appeals to me. And any of you who are programmers out there, it doesn't even have to be game programming. You're probably going to appreciate this because uh, 
and let's look at it. It's a program called Primitive. And what it allows programmers to do is examine code structure in VR. So right now, for a lot of VR programmers, they have to take off their HMD after they've tested something, change the source code, put the HMD back on, test it. This is being developed to avoid that. The dev can keep his HMD throughout the entire experience. And not only that, not only does it just substitute manually working on code, it looks like it actually enhances the experience because you can see structures, classes, whatever programming language you happen to be using, Pascal or C, whatever, right? And I know no, not many people use Pascal anymore, but the ability to see methods and classes and things side by side or portions of your uh, graphical code with AI is just a great ability to lay the code out around you in VR, which more than just being a substitute would just, I would think, all kinds of crazy productivity increases doing that. So if you're at all interested in programming or you are a programmer, check that out and let me know your thoughts. Really curious what you think of that. And I know there's a few of you out there that are programmers. So next up, we have uh, a Kickstarter project called Expanse. And I'm always a little hesitant with Kickstarters. My philosophy, and I mentioned this before, I've backed about five, six Kickstarters uh, so far, but I tend to be pretty conservative with who I invest in. Brian Fargo of InXile because I'm familiar with his experience with Interplay. He's always delivered. Uh, sometimes it was a buggy product, but he always delivered. So no problem with that. What these guys are doing though, I probably, I would wait for market, me personally, but the concept is cool. So what they're offering with their Expanse viewer is an alternative to regular HMDs. And I've talked a lot in the past about the, uh, HTC Vive with its Fresnel lens design versus the Oculus Rift with its hybrid, right? The pros and cons of each of those. What they both suffer from is what's called chromatic aberration, which is a crazy technical term, but basically it's the ability to focus colors on a single point using lenses is what it boils down to, right? Easy way to explain it is if you think of the old original telescopes, they were pretty much refractors. And refractors are the stereotypical department store telescopes that you see. They have a lens here and a lens in the eyepiece and that's what you're using to view the image. So the light gathering is done through the lens which creates that effect, right? And it distorts it as a result. That's why they developed other types of telescopes like Newtonians using mirrors to avoid that. That's the idea behind this Expanse viewer. Instead of using lenses, they use mirrors. So it comes, you know, with its own set of issues, but that is not one of them. It's going to offer, and that's what they promise, crisp, clear pictures through the HMD. So definitely going to be following this. Uh, oh, the, the big side effect of that. I say it and then I don't list one is they trade stereoscopic 3D for that. So it's still VR, but it's not true stereoscopic 3D. So until you get to try one, it's going to be hard to know what kind of a difference that makes. But on the surface, very cool and just neat to see a completely different take on an HMD rather than what we've been seeing because most of the you know, the ones in China and most of the ones being developed, certainly all the big three here, use the older style with the lens as opposed to mirrors. Speaking of HMDs, next up we have the FOVE or F-O-V-E Zero, which is kind of their first commercial product. It has received final specs and a release date. So the release date for this is going to be November 2nd is when they start their release date for pre-orders anyways. But they've also released specs, which I didn't have the first time I reported on this story. So it's a 1440 OLED display, 
which isn't bad. The field of view is a little lower. It's kind of more in the Gear VR's range at 90 to 100, whereas the new one, uh, Gear VR, the one that I showed, is 101. So it's, it's more in the Gear VR's range than it is the Rift or the Vive. The unfortunate thing is 70 hertz refresh rate as opposed to 90. Now, depending on your system makeup, that might not be a bad thing because if you've got a really low end unit and you're relying heavily on reprojection, 70 hertz is a safer target to hit for, right? But until we see it again, because the big factor in this one is the eye tracking. So the infrared eye tracking system that it uses, it's a 100, uh, 220 FPS infrared eye tracking systems. And those are apparently accurate up to about a degree. So take from that what you will. Uh, it's going to be very cool to see this actually in action. So that's one that I'm going to follow very, very closely. Last bit of news here is uh, another update, this one for V-Real, which is the VR streaming application that I talked about uh, at least a few weeks back. We're now getting word, uh, and I'm going to link you a Road to VR article, which is an interview with their CEO, uh, Todd Hooper, and he talks about their SDK, and he mentions that it's available for both Unity and Unreal 4 which we know contain VR acceleration bits in them. So very cool to see that be confirmed and that they're going to launch their SDK for both Rift and Vive, which again, I got to applaud that because kind of what I've been saying from day one is that it should encompass all the PC options. And lastly, he indicated that they were a Sony partner. So what that means is for a future VR, Sony isn't out of the question. They've got some inroads there already. All right, guys, that is it for me for the news video. I'm going to start working on some game videos and finishing up my build your own VR PC. If you haven't seen that, that was a video I uploaded yesterday. That's what I'm going to be doing and enjoying the Friday night. So as always, guys, cheers and definitely catch you on the VR flip side.